well, well, well. You thought it was all over. You thought we had said the last thing. But we have Courtney more to say. Like we mentioned in a video long, long ago. In fall 2020, we knew that there would be a new historical character and we saw the silhouette of her and leaks that she was going to be a 1980s doll. So we were just randomly released a, a new doll, guys. And she is from 1986 and she is Courtney Moore. And today we're going to be talking about that because she knew, she here, and let's go. So let's start with her name, Courtney Moore. I actually really like that her name is Courtney. I feel like, you know, it's the 80s. It really suits the time period. The name as a whole, Courtney Moore, it kind of feels like she's going to grow up, go to college, and become a kindergartner teacher. Kindergartner teacher? Kindergarten. <laughs> Kid kindergarten. Kid kindergarten. Kindergarten teacher. She's going to become a kindergarten teacher, and um, that's nice. I like that for her. I like that name in general. It's not, like, ugly. So, I mean... Let's give that name a seven? Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Alright, guys. The next thing is Courtney's appearance. Now, way back when I saw the silhouette, um, I knew her hair was going to be big, which is suitable for this time. Um, but I was expecting a new face mold or a, a doll of color of some sort of another ethnicity, whatever you want to call it. We got the classic face mold, and we got this. Blue eyes and blonde hair. Now, um, a lot of people are saying that she looks a lot like Mary Ellen, which, which is... Which, I mean, I kind of see it, but... The bangs. But to me, she looks a lot like Winnie. It's like if Winnie and Mary Ellen had a child, it would be Courtney. Yes. So... I mean, her hair leans more towards the blonde than those two, but it's still... I mean, in the red zone. Just take out the scrunchie and you basically have Winnie. Yeah, but it goes a little bit more blonde. In a lot of shots you can see that it looks really, really blonde. And it looks cute when it's all like styled up. It's definitely the 80s. Kind of looks like my mom. Um, in the 80s. Not yeah, now. <laughs> not now. That's like, I've seen pictures of her and that's, she looks accurate. This is good. I mean, it's I mean, she's blonde. not a particularly, like, she's not an ugly doll. Um, but I guess I, and I guess I was secretly hoping for an Asian American or an Indian American doll because those are pretty much like underrepresented and in, in some cases not re represented at all in American Girl, especially in the American Girl historical line. I would have wanted something that stood out more because she looks a lot like Mary Ellen and they're both still here. Neither one of them are retired. So I would have wanted to see someone more like Nancy, say, from Stranger Things. Like, just give us, like, some brown hair. She, that would have been cute. Like, and she would have stood out amongst the dolls available currently. And so... Yeah, she just, she definitely doesn't stand out. I mean, but she's not ugly. Like, we own dolls like her. And, but, um... On a scale from 1 to 10, I feel like a 6.5, just yeah. because I was I was kind of disappointed to see her when I first saw her. <laughs> I was like, oh. Because I was just expecting something so new, and we just got this. But she's still very cute. Are you sure I don't have pizza sauce on my face? Yeah. Speaking of which, we forgot to mention that vi this video is sponsored by Papa Murphy's Take and Bake Pizza. Our order is light sauce, extra cheese, and most controversial of all... Pineapple. Love at 425 degrees. We have Courtney's collection. Here is her meat outfit. Um, what does her shirt say? Cool? Okay. Cool. Um, okay, let's talk about this. The jean skirt, like, I'm feeling it. This does look somewhat, this looks like the 80s, but a little bit too costumey. It's a little bit too much right now, the stupid gamer side of it. Like, it's kind of taken away from just the look of... I feel like with all of her collection, you'll see that it's definitely reads as the 80s, and maybe perhaps too much. It can lean a little stereotypical with some of the pieces. As far as her meat outfit goes, like, I'm not offended by it. It's there. I like the skirt. I think the boots or whatever the shoe situation is is 
cute, so. I definitely prefer her other clothing pieces that we see over her meat outfit, above <laughs> all. Some of them. <laughs> So yeah, some of them. And then we have her accessories. Um, so we got some headphones with different colors and that connect to those little things. I don't know what those things were called. Walkman. Yeah, and she's got all these bracelets, which like okay. once again feels a lot like a costume. Like just mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I, it works. Whatever. It kind of reminds me of you remember like uh, TGIF, the Katy Perry thing. Mm -hmm. How she looked like. That's what she looks like. You know what I mean? Next, we have Courtney's Care Bears pajamas for $28. And everybody on AGIG freaked out about this because they loved it. And I think it's stinking pretty cute. And, you know... I I'm, like that we have characters here that we know. And, you know, I'm big hashtag team nightgown all the way. And also, like, I, I, I stand Care Bears. Yeah, and I know they have these in girl size. And let me just say, size extra large girls... Yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. it. It's just so cute, man. Like, there's nothing I'd rather spend my money on than an American girl made for children nightgown for myself. The next part of her collection can seem a little bit overwhelming because it's all mixed and matched, but you could also buy the pieces separately or together in a certain outfit that they planned, and then you can buy her entire, like, everything for a certain price. So, so like, American Girl really just wanted to make her collection as complicated as possible, which, um, is cool, I guess. <laughs> so, um, get your little Excel spreadsheets out. This Friday night, do it all again. Do it all again. So we have Courtney's Ultimate Collection, which I don't know how much this includes, but I do see a sleeping bag, so it's not just her clothes, but it definitely has the mix and match and stuff, and this is $249. I mean, like, if you want to do this, do it. They used to do it with Pleasant Company dolls, like... They used to do it with Kanani. Yeah, like, you could you could just get it all, but, like, um, I don't know if this is all of it. It's not. It's definitely not. Anyway, um, so even though they're mix and match, they planned these, like, outfits out. Um, the first one was Courtney's cardigan and leggings outfit and this says 16 through 118 so if you were to get everything included on here to make this outfit it would be 118 because <laughs> she has a lot of accessories with her and <laughs> no. Um, but we'll talk about these pieces of course by themselves soon. Yeah. Then we have... Uh, as, ah! Remember that part? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's a flute. Right. By the way, congrats to Katy Perry. She had a baby. <laughs> I don't know why I felt like I needed to mention that. Then we have Courtney's dress and jacket outfit, um, which is $64 if you buy the whole shindig going on here. Um, I mean, it's all cute pieces that we're going to be talking about, but 64 to get all of this is really ridiculous. But, you know. That looks exactly like Katy Perry. In the that is Katy Perry right there, guys. Oh my gosh. Well, Courtney? More like Katy, am I right? It's her jeans and crop jacket outfit, and it's 72 to get all seen here. Um, but, you know, you don't have to get all of that, and it could be... And I recommend that you don't. Because that's not a good idea, and it's expensive. Um, uh, we have Courtney's tie and suspenders outfit, um, and this is fifty eight to get everything seen here. And girl, with these like sunglasses and everything, this is too much. You that need... looks like a Shake It Up Disney Channel outfit right there. That looks beyond like that. It looks like that that they like, like are high or something. Shake it up. Oh my God, she kind of looks like Bella Thorne. Mm. Hi, I'm Bella Thorne from uh, Shake It Up. <laughs> You're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> then we have Courtney's splatter print dress and crop jacket for $110 for all seen here. Now all seen here is all this junk on the floor, I'm guessing. Um, but like the rest of it, I'm like, I'm, I'm digging it. 
groovy. Of, kind of. Then we have Courtney's t-shirt and skirt outfit. Like yeah, I don't know why they pose her like that. That's really She's weird. About to fall Did she break her back? Yeah, that isn't. That's not flattering. That's not a flattering She's, angle. Dude, go to the hospital. Yeah, that's not a flattering angle for you, girlfriend. I'm that sorry. Ain't natural. I need mean, medical attention. Eighty-two dollars for all of this, which I don't know why, because I'm not seeing any accessories or anything. But okay, let's get into the pieces themselves. Ew, starting with my least favorite. <laughs> First, we have Courtney's shirt and tie for sixteen dollars. I was doing like a Justin Timberlake voice there, if you guys didn't know. That might be my. This might be my least favorite item in all of Courtney's collection. To me, it just looks like, um, what? It looks like what's even on it. It looks like an employee at Weenie Hut Junior. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, Weenie Hut Junior is in a real place that's made up in. I know. SpongeBob. I know. Okay. Anyway, but it looks like somebody. Moved I don't there. even know what the print is on it. Like, are those parrots? No, they're not. Like, no, I don't, it's Weenie Hut. It's print. just weird. The idea of a tie was cute, but they definitely did this very wrong. Then we have Courtney's T-shirt and tank set for sixteen dollars. I mean, all of this is reasonably priced. But the problem it gets is you can't really have a full outfit unless you buy, like, three things. Yeah, then it, like, ends up being, like, $40 for one. But it, it, but if you just want to pick and choose, it's pretty reasonable. And um, I'm not mad at either of these. I kind of wish that it was just this shirt by itself because I think the green's a pretty butt-ugly neon green But booger. I mean, if it's $16 and you get both, I'm okay with having the booger shirt. But, I oh. mean, yeah. Yeah. Just, you could just let your least favorite doll wear it. Then we have Courtney's crop jacket for $12. And girl, this is this is last Friday night all the way. Like, it, I like this a lot. The shape of it is definitely very 80s. And this is just cute. Like, I know people would actually wear this. I kind of dig it. Yeah, like, this is a... It it's is, like the 80s, but it's also like, uh, like the two, early 2000s when they were kind of bringing back the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can see this on Ham Montana yeah, slightly, but, but, I mean, I don't mind it. Like, the price, it's only $12. I would get that. Like, okay, yeah. T-G-I-F. Come on. Ah. Then we have Courtney's denim jacket for $36. What? And I believe that's because this is real denim, but that's very stupid. That is such a, such a ridiculous price. At first I was going to say, oh, that's cute. But girlfriend, I could buy myself a denim jacket for $36. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the then we have Courtney's cardigan for $18. And when I felt like I was an old cardigan under, under someone's bed, bed, Courtney put it on and said it was her favorite. I knew you dancing in the eighties. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is ugly. I kind of like it. It's a little. It's I, a, I I I kind of like it. Okay, it, I kind of like it. Like it's ugly, but it's like uh, so like ugly it. that it's, and it also kind of looks like the floor of an arc, like of a roller skating rink. But I kind of like it. Oh yeah, that is what it looks like. Great observation, Kylie. That was like really smart Thank of you. That's what they pay me the big bucks for. Okay, then we have Courtney's jeans for sixteen dollars. Okay, why are these? Now listen, it, this listen, listen, listen. But first of all, I really like the shape of these. They're mom jeans, and you know, mom jeans are making a comeback. But the one thing I just want answers to is why are the top buttons unbuttoned, <laughs> and can they button back up? I, like, why couldn't they just made that, like, an extra little V detail? Why do they have to put, like, buttons there? It just looks like her crotch is gonna come out. Like, girl, it looks like she couldn't fit into her old jeans, but she's still in denial that she gained weight, so she just unbuttoned the front and is, like, walking I, around. I think they is real denim, but obviously a denim jacket is harder to sew, like, with all the pockets and things. I like and it, the, but, you The know. jeans, jeans, like, I need, everyone needs jeans. Then we have Courtney's skirt and suspenders for $16. Now, to me, this is something that leans a bit more stereotypical costumey. Yeah. I think it's a little stupid, but, um. You know. And the skirt looks really, really cheap, not gonna lie. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Then we have Courtney's leggings set for sixteen dollars. Um, one's look, one of them looks sparkly, and the other's like 
<clears throat> bright blue. I think it was like for like aerobics, like because you know that was like an eighties thing. That just reminds me like back in the day when we used to wear like bright colored leggings as pants. Well, that was like elementary school. That's just like what you do. Yeah, it's like the look. It wasn't a good time. Um, but yeah, I think this is this is of course like gonna be like aerobics or something, and I guess those are necessary if you want to go all out. Then we have Courtney's splatter print dress for $18. Now, $18 is a pretty fair price, I guess, for this. Now, I think the silhouette of the dress is very much 80s. It was a common silhouette in dresses from the 80s. Except the print is just really throwing me off. It looks really... It looks like a roller skating yeah. rink floor. Um, yeah, but it's like just like a little stereotypical. It just looks tacky. Yeah, it's kind of tacky. Like, tone it down a little bit. It's starting to look a little costumey. And like, we don't want to be like Julie and just look like we're just like a costume. Like, we want real, genuine... We want the authentic 80s experience. Yeah. Then we have Courtney's flats and socks for $12. Cool. Now, I could, this is this is something they'd wear, just with the weird socks showing, like, and then your shoes. Great job. C cool shoes. And then we have her high top sneakers for sixteen dollars. Now, these are pretty groovy. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, what do you think? Um, nah. The, I it's mean, a little. I wish it was a different color besides pink. They're white. With pink. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Then we have Courtney's sunglasses for $10. That is like totally rad. I want to wear my sunnies all day long. And I just want to sing in Frolic to the Arcade. It's the 80s. She looks stupid. It's the with 80s. It's the dawn of time. Technology is taking over. But we love it. Let me be ruled by Pac-Man. These probably should only be like outside because they look really stupid on the mix and match outfit when she was inside. Like, okay, look, just put them on your head, girl. Maybe it's controversial, but I don't think dolls look good with sunglasses. The sunglasses are not great for dolls, really, unless they're like on their head. Then we have Courtney's belt bag and watch for $16. Belt bag? I think it means fanny pack. Yeah, and cool watch. <laughs> <laughs> what, can you tell time or something? <laughs> That's cool. I never learned how. Yes, I did. That was a joke. Then we have Courtney's fashion accessories for $16. Oh, so this is like a lot of colorful, stupid earrings. Now, I say stupid. Actually, no, I like no, them. I like them. I like them. Um, I'd hate the little lacy glove I hate things. That. Everything else is fine. Like the scrunchie and the earrings I'll take. Then we have her school supplies for $30. It's Girl, like, this is paper. Yeah. It's like the Lisa Frank style thing, which, you know, was a thing. But, yeah, it's literally paper. Print it out. Yeah, get, but... get a little get a little uh, dirt on your hands and print something out. It should not be $30. How but... about 30 cents? Then we have Courtney's Pac-Man lunch set for 25 bucks. Well, I have to say my favorite feature of this lunch is the Cosmic Brownie, because I think that's just delightful. The apples look fake. Yeah. So do the cheese balls. Then we, Are they cheese balls or like olives? I don't know. I really don't know what I'm even looking at here. But um, I appreciate the cosmic brown. I guess Pac-Man's okay. Then we have Courtney's sleepover accessory set for $50. Now guys, this this is like cute. I'm not going to lie because I see this as her having this sleepover with her stepsister. Um, what? She has a stepsister. We'll get into that later, hun. Oh my god, I have a stepsister. Oh my god. Uh, but like, anyway, like, we would have sleepovers, just me and- You're not my stepsister. Okay, I know. Me and Kylie, just, we're, we're biologically sisters, would just have like sleepovers with ourselves because, you know, we have no friends. Like, like I can relate to this. It's so cute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I can relate to having sleepovers because I've been on a sleepover. And like, this is good fun, but we would definitely not bring the following. But that's because we're from the 21st century. You ever know just like when you're like talking and you just like ramble in circles? Plus, I just really appreciate the cootie catcher. And the little sodas. I like that they have a band so that the dolls can actually hold them. I really want to know what cassettes they're listening to. And... Is that a block of cheese? I, yeah, I don't know what's in the bowl. Like, cause Wait, I, or they must be chips. Cause, like, we would just get, like, Doritos and things. Oh, my God. If I were you, I'd get Doritos, Courtney. If they were even invented. <laughs> then we have Courtney's Caboodles and Hair Accessories Kit for 
I'm so sorry. I was like dyslexic for a minute. This is the story. <laughs> for $36. I almost said $63. This is $36, guys. <laughs> Kit and caboodle. Like, that's what people in the Midwestern say. Caboodle? I'm sorry if you're Midwestern. I just have to do with my accent. What is a caboodle? What is it's, you know, like, oh, I wanted to get to caboodle, eh? Is she, does, is she from... Is she from the Midwest? No, she isn't. Oh, then I don't know what's happening. It's caboodles and hair. Well, it must be an 80s thing, guys. I'm really, I'm really I, sorry if I offend you with my Midwestern accent. I see, I see eyeshadow, but for the rest of it, I'm just seeing a lot of crazy hair products, which is definitely a thing in the 80s. They oh. would perm their hair. Like, like I got that. Oh. I got that down. Good thing they made a set for that. But Oh, rate my accent. If you're from the Midwest, <laughs> now I just stop. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna stop now. Yes! This is what everyone's been talking about. Courtney's Care Bear sleeping bag set for $36. Yes! The only 36 Like, I'm impressed. Because, look, it's a little expensive. It's a little expensive. But, like, in American girl uh, religion, that's, like... That's nothing. Exactly. Like, um, I'm okay with these dude, prices. I mean, honestly, the next time I have an American girl store, it's gonna be very difficult to stop me from buying this. I'm buying it. And, look, she has the little dream bear... Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Absolutely. Oh my god, it is like so cute. Okay guys, um, so here we got really meta. Dun, dun, dun. Courtney has a Pleasant Company doll, which is Molly, um, and this is $30. And just a thing to note here, while the style of the book aligns to the first version of Meet Molly, in that it is the parchment covered style, the book is technically anochron... Sitting. <laughs> <laughs> anachronistic. 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 The book is technically anachronistic. The <laughs> anachronistic. 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 I'm so sorry. <laughs> anachronistic. I think. The cover illustration used was not introduced until 1989. Oh my god! When Taylor Swift was born and when. Yeah. <laughs> you never go out of style. Because the first um, edition illustrations were done by Chris Payne and replaced by the ones by Nick Bakes. Bakes. <laughs> so, that's so this is the wrong book. This didn't come <laughs> till three years later. But, but also, but here's something even more upsetting. If you take off her clothes, I saw this on AGIG. Well, if you take off her clothes, we're talking about the doll now, not yes. the book. <laughs> if you take off her clothes, she is flesh colored. And um, does anyone, does any, does any American girl historian understand why that's such a big deal? Pleasant Company dolls had white bodies to begin with. But they made these a lot less creepy than the mini me's, like the mini, well, not mini me's, mini many like felicities and like because those things just look creepy i'm i'm sorry if that offends you like they did this pretty accurate and she's given this at christmas by her dad and that's like pretty like meta like she getting a doll of the brand that she is and she is a character it's like foreshadowing <laughs> you know like one day you know, i'll be a character <laughs> you know i really don't know why anyone watches these videos <laughs> we love you <laughs> thanks honey you're hot is no. the crown jewel of her collection. This is Courtney's bedroom set for $225. And guys, like, I love how the back wall is already, like, decorated. The shelves, everything, the bedding's there. A bunk bed. It is a little it's pricey. A, but it's a bunk bed. Like, guys, I love bunk beds. And, like, the Truly Me's ones are, are, like, this price. But they don't have all the cool stuff on them. Like, it's a little pricey. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just saying, like, as, like, I upgrade certain things in my dollhouse, I would want to upgrade to this. Like, this is very nice, but, like, the price... It is stupid pricey, but I guess if you have two beds, you have to double the price. That's their logic, not mine, but okay. Exactly. Then we have Courtney's Pac-Man arcade game for $149. Now, guys, I don't know if this, like, turns on or anything. Like, I don't know the details yet. Kinda, it's back-ordered. This, this, like, uh, kind of gives me the same vibes as, uh, 
Sage's hot air balloon where you're just like yeah I mean this would be kind of you know cool. set it in a corner somewhere this would be kind of cool in a dollhouse but like okay um like this is cool it's expensive for $149 it better like actually have a screen that turns on and guess what you could just make it out of cardboard I've literally seen tutorials for this exact thing and I've seen toys like this where it's just a miniature arcade game like has no one else seen those because they're like 20 bucks target but okay yeah that's her collection okay so that's all of her collection um I mean I'm not disappointed with it entirely I'm not like in love with it but I there are certain pieces that like if I went to American Girl I would definitely think about getting them or like the bed I would definitely like want if someone would please somehow get me that on a scale from 1 to 10 though we gotta rate Courtney's collection give it like a solid like a like a solid um uh, how about a how about a how about a seven and a half yeah seven and a half is they, good they tried yeah it, and I like it for the most part, so... Yeah, there's just some... Cheers to that. Some things look really stupid, so, um, please dress your doll responsibly. Last thing is Courtney's story. Now, guys, um, her first <laughs> book, uh, Courtney Changes the Game, has been released <laughs> along with the doll. <laughs> what are you doing? Courtney Changes the Game. <laughs> and the illustrations. What? The illustrations look... Like Stupid. But yeah, well, all we have are these weird illustrations. We don't have much. But anyway, um, what I'm saying here is that the second book is not till next year, so we don't know a lot of details. So we're just gonna have to like kind of guesstimate some of those. Um, also, we've seen a lot of different things on different articles. This is all fresh, so we're gonna be reading a lot of junk, and a lot of it might run together. But just listen to the details, okay? Let's begin. Courtney lives in Orange Valley, California with her blended family. Her parents divorced when she was two years old, but mutually get along. Cool. She likes to be in control of what is happening around her. A struggle with the many changes that are happening, such as her mother running for mayor of the town Whoa. and changes at home. She looks up to various women as role models and wants to see more female characters into video games. Her favorite song is Girl... <laughs> <laughs> this is... Her favorite song is Girls Just Wanna Have Fun by Cindy Lauper, <laughs> and her favorite candy is <laughs> gummy bears. <laughs> nice. Courtney can be very shy when speaking to people she doesn't know or speaking up for herself or family. She and her stepsister Tina don't initially get along as much as they- Initially? Stop. <laughs> she, God, like, there, God, there is so much to write. Like, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what are you writing? There's so much to read. What are you writing? She and her stepsister Tina don't initially get- <laughs> <laughs> Initially? It's just letters. <laughs> I see him. We don't initially get along. Kelly, you're making this over an hour long. Every time we talk, we spew gold. She we're like, we're like professional public speakers, just like Courtney's mom. Maybe we should run for mayor. We can say that we initially go on. <laughs> That's our slogan. She and her stepsister, Tina. <laughs> She and <laughs> Come on, you can do this. Hey, if you keep acting like that, no one's gonna elect the mayor. She and her stepsister Tina don't initially get along <laughs> as much as they used to at the start of the series. What? Okay. <laughs> what? Well, this, this is like the personality part, so we have to see what happens. As younger, what happens? This is, this is gonna be in a lot of mixed order, so just hang in there, guys. As younger children, the two enjoy playing with My Little Pony's toys and other things, but Courtney is now upset that Tina seems to be dismissing her and pushing her away. Courtney is an avid gamer, and she has one of the highest scores on Pac-Man at Smiley's Arcade. She Sounds is, fake, but okay. She is also into movies such as Star Wars. Wow. Whoa, me too. Her older stepsister, Tina, calls her a nerd for enjoying such things. No, I think that would that's be like, that, that's a geek, but thank you, Tina. Stupid Tina. I don't, I don't like Tina already. I don't initially get along I don't, with her. I don't initially like her. She gets the idea to create her own video game with a self-created character, Crystal Star Shooter. She is also very interested in space, 
and excited for the launch of the sh of the space shuttle Challenger, including the fact a school teacher is going into space. Oh my god, that's like so epic. Her teacher, the teacher is an astronaut. It'd be Courtney is very imaginative, often getting lost in daydreams about Crystal Star Shooter's world. Courtney owns a pet guinea pig, Parsley. Okay, that was the. That's that was the not her, her story. Now here's her story. Courtney is the best gamer at the arcade, but she can't understand why there aren't more girl characters in the game she plays. When a school project allows her to create her own video game, the hero is a girl who knows how to handle any situation, something Courtney struggles with in real life. Whether it's learning to share a room with her stepsister or supporting her mom when she announces she's running for mayor, Courtney's blended family has to learn to work together differently. It's a whole new game for Courtney, and she's faking out the rules as she goes. That was a cringy little thing they wrote in. Okay. Courtney's having an awesome summer with her friends. Now, this book hasn't been released yet, so there's a lot of things that are going to be confusing. And this, this is all going to confuse everyone, okay? Well, she and Sarah have sleepovers almost every night. Oh, wait. They, she has friends? Oh, I thought she was having the sleepovers with Tina. I'm so sorry. Okay, so it's Sarah she has them with. They go to the mall with Kip. Who the heck is Kip? Weirdo. Ride bikes, watch movies, and swim in Courtney's pool. But the arcade is still Courtney's favorite place to be. That's where she meets Isaac. He's even better at video games than Courtney. But life outside the arcade is complicated. Her dad gets a new job and schedule. Her stepsister becomes Courtney's reluctant roommate. Her mom starts a campaign for mayor, and her friend comes down with a frightening disease. Okay, guys, so this is something that we are kind of treating uh, uh, as a potential to be something very huge and impactful. But to be honest, we don't have too much information on what this disease is. But I think it's cool. Not that they got a disease, but that the, the book is talking about it. So, just to let you know. And I'm pretty sure it's Isaac that gets it. But we don't know because this book is not published. Yeah. She tells him about her made-up hero, Crystal Starshooter. Are they in love? I don't know, wait. Crystal Starshooter. And Isaac has gnarly ideas to add to Courtney's game world. Is the, she in love? I think this might be, like, love. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a romance novel. A romance? By, uh, by Nicholas Sparks. Yeah, this is a Nicholas Sparks book called Sparks Fly. <laughs> it should be Courtney, Sparks Fly. Anyway, um, the two become good friends, and Isaac starts hanging out with Kip and Sarah, too. Who the heck is Kip? I want to know who Kip is. Like, who the flip is Kip? <laughs> when an issue with Isaac comes between Courtney and Sarah, Courtney doesn't know what to do. Can she support her new friend without losing her best friend? No. Oh my god, a love triangle. <laughs> That's not what that would <laughs> Okay, there's a lot going on. But the arcade isn't the only space in need of more female representation. If her mom wins the election for Orange Valley mayor, she'll become the first woman to ever serve that role. How exciting! But Courtney is shocked when a reporter questions her mom's ability to be a good mayor and a good mom. Why can't she be both? Courtney wonders. Courtney stands up for her mom's ability, makes Orange Valley a better place, which should be what matters in an election. Courtney worries that her outbursts have ruined her mom's chances of winning, but instead, mom commends her when speaking up. But I'm so pleased that you were confident enough to stand up for what you believe in. I'm proud of you. Though Courtney is used to life with divorced parents, nothing could have prepared her for her dad moving 300 miles away Shut for a new up. job. That Shut up! Shut up! jerk! Shut up! It's like Twilight! They, s they used... Sorta. They used to spend every weekend playing video games, bowling, and eating waffles, and she misses him a lot. Now she has to spend weekends with her stepsister, Tina, who does not like sharing a room or dealing with Courtney's guinea pig, Parsley. It takes a conversation with her stepdad, Mike, to put that's these- my that's, that's my dad's name. Oh my god, that's so cool. Courtney, Courtney and I, like, I've never are like met, soul sisters. I've never, I've never heard anyone else have the name Mike. To put these changes in perspective for Courtney, Tina is struggling with change in her own way as she continues to grieve the death of her mom. Shut up! So, guys, that's why Tina's kind of a jerk, is 
because like her mom is died and her mom has died and she just gets a new too. that like the, I would be mad that. I'd be like dad I'm gonna fight you <laughs> as Courtney begins to understand everyone adapts to change differently and you can't always know what someone is struggling with even if you shared a bunk bed with them. After spending weeks preparing for launch of the Space Shuttle Challenger at school, Courtney is scared and confused after she sees the explosion unfold on live television. Why did it happen? But even her teacher, Mr. Garcia, can't answer that question. Courtney realizes that bad things could happen to anyone, anywhere, anytime, and it scares her. I have a lot of opinions about this. Um, to be honest, I didn't know much about her story going into this, but I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised. Some things I like about it. Um, once again, I like that she is in a family where, you know, they have divorced parents. That's really cool. Just I, like Julie. Like, yeah. I think that representation is important to kids, you know, because a lot of people feel bad about, you know, their divorced mom and dad or whatever. So I think that's really cool. I, I like that they gave um, her stepsister, Tina, like, a backstory a little bit along I with that, like, too. I like that it discusses dealing with change in different ways. I think that's very important to touch on, and I think, you know, everyone deals with that in a different way, and it's, you know, learning to... Like, with her dad moving 300 or whatever miles away. Yeah, I like that they talk about um, adapting to change, especially in situations that, you know, are out of your control. I like that she's interested in STEM a little bit, like she's interested in developing her own game, that's kind of cool. And it's really cool that they have like an imaginative like fit world that she's creating along with her friend Isaac, I think that's really yeah. cool. and I think it'll be really interesting to see what's going on with Isaac, who I'm assuming is the one with the disease, because I think that's also a and pretty I, cool detail. Somehow that ends up interfering with her friendship with Sarah, but I think it's probably going to be her wanting to visit him and like, yeah. I don't know. We, I, I really I don't, don't know. know. So we don't know there's much. There's a lot of cool aspects Wait. to it that I feel like a modern girl can learn from, so. There's like her mother running for mayor and then she's like speaking up about it and being, for this she like is worrying that she's ruining like her mom's chances of winning and things like that. She's on like Good Morning Orange Valley, that's like pretty funny. Um, <laughs> but um, she's got the rocket thing and she gets a little scared in places and like you know like it's good to see it beyond just the fact of her making a video game. To be honest with you guys like Courtney and her story kind of really reminds me of us in a way so yeah. I think it's kind of cool and um, I think she's a cool girl. Um, I mean I'm glad they didn't dive too deep into the whole creating a video game thing. I guess it's just like a side like hobby and love of hers as where a lot of the story itself is just all the conflict and things that she has to face, which are, it's a pretty cool idea. I know Julie was like came from a divorced family or whatever, but I think it's really cool that this particular story, Courtney has a stepsister. I think that's really cool because that's just a whole different ball game and a whole different change to adapt to. And I think that's pretty neat. We also have a stepsister, mm -hmm. so yeah. On a scale from one to 10, I mean, I'd give her like a nine. I'm. Yeah, I'm, like, really pleasantly surprised with her story. Because when I was looking at her collection and just looking at her in general and kind of reading, like, her basic thing and, like, her changing the game, I thought that was a literal, like, too much arcade stuff, you know? Like, I thought she was going to be some cringy, like, overly stim girl. Yeah, I love video games, dude. Let's go. But, like, you know, it's just it's talking about things like her with her dad and like they used to play games then he left and stuff and she's playing them and creating a new character for like feminism and that kind of stuff is really cool. It was only what 40 years ago so like um a lot of your guys' parents um were like born around this time and like are Courtney's age at this point so like you can see the ways that like this is coming more into modern day. The more in, like the further and further you go into it, like if there were to be a '90s um, historical, I would be very afraid because. Dun, dun, na, 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 na. Dun, dun, so no one told you life was gonna be this way. That's, but like that'd be a little frightening because like I've seen things from the '90s and like you know like that was like really close to like my year of birth. So this averages Courtney's total score to to a 7.5 which makes her a pretty good doll. I think she has a lot of strong qualities and overall I guess we would put her in the she's in the upper middle end of the 
line of the historical things like better than julie but not better than felicity so do with that near, what you near will. nea kind of like in the zone bro like a good place like if we're not calling her like one of the le- le- lesser anything she she's, she's a good doll she's a solid doll do i wish she was more exciting appearance wise sure but she's a very solid doll and yeah just put your guys' opinions on Courtney down below if you guys have her, if you guys want her. I mean, what you guys think of her story. I think it's really interesting. So yeah, this is definitely probably the last video for the Be Forever historical best and worst for maybe a couple of years. Or maybe they might pop one out like, well, I mean, they had to be working on something. So, bye.